Hello friends, welcome to our YouTube channel, Metallurgical Engineering. So today in this video, I am going to discuss about the Eclean steel. So this is a new kind of uh, steel designed uh, for uh, uh, for preventing the ha very hard targets. So this is basically used in uh, uh, forces. So what is this? So this is a high strength, low alloy. and low cost steel also low cost steel developed for a new generation of bunker buster So this is basically is a type of uh, munition that is designed to penetrate hardened targets. Okay. Yeah. So this is also called ES type of ES1 type of steel. Okay. So the development of uh, Eglin steel was commissioned to find a low cost replacement for a strong and tough. So this is strong and tough also. So strength and toughness both kind of uh, properties is uh, already existing in this steel but expensive super alloys steels such as AF1410 and Armet 100 so hope you guys listen about this Armet 100 because uh, it's an uh, ultra high strength type of martensitic alloy steel okay yeah so the main alloying element uh, are for this armet is cobalt nickel these are the two but uh, chromium and because the steel is this so chromium and molybdenum and carbon are also the alloying element but in a small amount so uh, its exceptional properties are hardness like we talk about the exception properties then hardness fracture toughness and ductility okay so just a brief uh, info about the armet 100 what is this okay so a high uh, performance uh, casing material is required so the uh, the weapon survives the high impact speeds okay so the quality is in Eglin steel okay so now uh, I will uh, talk about the material can be less expensive because it, it can be can be ladle refined so this Eglin steel is ladle refined and as such it does not uh, require it does not require vacuum processing so it is not very costly unlike some other high performance alloys Eglin steel uh, can also be welded easily okay yeah this can also be welded very easily and uh, broadening the range of its application just because of welding uh, it can be welded easily yeah so it uh, uses roughly half as much uh, nickel as other super alloys and uh, substituting silicon to help with the uh, toughness okay so and some properties are like uh, i'll just give out the details of the material composition just by weight 
so first i'll just write the elements iron carbon manganese silicon chromium moly nickel tungsten vanadium copper phosphorus sulfur calcium and some trace elements like nitrogen and aluminum also now i will give the material composition by weight one by one so we'll start with aluminum itself so this is uh, max to max point zero five percent this is as a uh, impurity maximum zero point one four percent just change the color so calcium also like very less zero point zero two sulfur it's very low already phosphorus it's, uh, same as uh, sulfur almost yeah copper is uh, zero point five percent vanadium is 0 0.052 0 0.3 percent to okay i will also tell the effect of uh, these uh, elements one by one first let me complete the composition by a uh, weight so about uh, tungsten this is uh, 0 0.72 point uh, 3.25 by weight nickel is almost 5% moly is 0.55% maximum and this chromium is 1.52 3.25% silicon is 1.25% mn is 0.85% and carbon is 0.162 0.35% and the balance is iron that is around 84 to 90 percent okay so this is the uh, material composition details by weight percent okay yeah so now i will also tell you what are the effect of uh, like silicon chromium moly nickel tungsten vanadium so if we'll talk about regarding silicon so silicon stabilizes the austenite phase okay and it has the toughness also chromium is responsible for strength and hardenability okay molybdenum also for hardenability nickel toughness not only one element is responsible for the toughness you can say like uh, some other elements may also be responsible for the toughness of this steel okay like uh, vanadium vanadium is also responsible for the toughness okay we'll talk about now tungsten so it uh, enhances the strength and wear resistance property also okay yeah so this is all about the functioning of uh, uh, each element in this steel so now i will talk about the kind of heat treatment which is uh, can be given for this uh, aglin steel so heat treatments so basically if uh, we will see so the material has to uh, undergo heat treatment involving like uh, normalization normalization quenching and tempering okay so these three uh, step by step we have to do to develop the required austenitic microstructure okay 
ऑस्टेनेटिक माइक्रो स्ट्रक्चर या विद सब्सिक्वेंट टेम्परिंग लाइक इन द लास्ट वी विल डू दिस वन देन वी कैन गेट द रिक्वायर्ड ऑस्टेनेटिक माइक्रो स्ट्रक्चर या सो नेक्स्ट आई विल टॉक अबाउट द प्रॉपर्टीज फॉर दिस काइंड ऑफ और पर्टिकुलरली फॉर दिस स्पेशल काइंड ऑफ स्टील सो एट रूम टेम्परेचर इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द रूम टेम्परेचर देन ई एस वन काइंड ऑफ स्टील और ई एस वन दैट इज एग्लिन स्टील शोज द टेंसाइल स्ट्रेंथ इज अराउंड वन थ्री थ्री सेवन एम पी या दैट इज़ अ वेरी गुड वैल्यू एंड अल्टीमेट स्ट्रेंथ that is around 1701 mpa okay and uh, and the same properties at some higher temperature like around some 480 or 500 degree centigrade these properties would be like it shows 1320 mpa this tensile strength value that is a uh, yeah and uh, ultimate strength will be around uh, 1487 mpa and uh, if you'll talk about the hardness uh, for this eglin steel then the rockwell c hardness that is around 45.6 and if we can uh, talk about in terms of brittle hardness then it is 448 okay and uh, for toughness value the charpy notch impact is uh, in joules that is 76 joules at room temperature and if we'll talk about uh, the cryo atmosphere then it is around 58 joules rate of around minus 40 degree centigrade temperature so these are the some special uh, properties for this eglin steel and uh, this is about the composition and uh, these are the special features of this steel okay